Hi everyone, it's Miss Nikki Ann, and I just wanted to give an update on my doctor visits um, for the week, especially with the new pop specialist, Dr. Jeffrey Kluger. Um, let me just get right to it. I'm so tired, everybody. Um, did I? Oh, so I met with my new primary care, and um, I don't know if I spoke about that, but that was like Friday. And um, so uh, he's doing the IV fluid thing for me, and that's great. Um, I'll be going Friday, and um, I'm hoping to just go every week, you know, and so forth. So he's really open to IV fluid treatment, saline infusion treatment, my new primary care. So that was good. Um, he's a very simple guy. I really like him. Um, and uh, and the fact that the office they do things um, like so I was when I left I was like do I need to make another appointment I know I did blood work she was like it's all about your needs when you need us call us I was like oh and I would notice that they would take appointments and over the phone they'd be like yeah yeah well he's gonna want you to come in all right tomorrow that's great it would be like everyone who called that was either going to come in that day or the next day and that they just didn't spend time scheduling far out for their patients like they tend to their patients. Um, seems like maybe they have very needy patients. And um, so I'm in good hands because I am needy. <laughs> so, um, and they did a great job with coordinating my um, saline infusion um, session because I had a script but then I didn't know that my hospital, my infusion hospital, um, they don't do it by script. Um, they have the, the office calls and then they do it in conjunction together. So, and he's also a part of the hospital um, where I get my infusion. So it's really great. Um, I worked out well. Then I, I'll put the, the, and I'm sorry guys, I'm so tired. I'm so over this whole being ill and I've been to two appointments today. I had um, hematology today um, and I usually do that every three months but now we're going to do it every six months because it seems like my numbers are doing better as far as my anemia and leukopenia. Well no, not my leukopenia. <laughs> my anemia numbers are doing better and have stabilized. So every six months we'll check that. The leukopenia is just what it is. Um, let's see. Oh, so and then I had group meditation as well. And so then I had the appointment with the specialist yesterday. I left. There was a point where I just started crying because uh, first there was the consultation with him. His staff, the, the, the ladies there are just amazing and Amazing. His staff, his, Dr. Kluger's staff is phenomenal. I'll put that that way. I think he himself is a brilliant um, electrophysiologist and cardiologist. Um, as far as POTS is concerned, knowing what I know now and about everyone else's experience here on YouTube and throughout the dysautonomia community with POTS, I would say my experience was POTS 101. Um, I didn't, I came in as a patient who was already doing all of these things that he would recommend. You know, I am um, active, I use my pedals, I, um, you know, I'm in bed a lot, but I try not to be bedridden all day. Um, I've done floor enough, I've done this, I've done that, I've done all of those things. And so ultimately what I want to say about, I wish my team of doctors was sitting here, um, I w want to commend them. My rheumatologist, even my oldest autonomia specialist who is a neurologist out in Boston, actually gave her a recommendation today because I realized between rheumatology, um, neurology in Boston, um, uh, GI, hematology, um, neuro-ophthalmology, um, cardiologist, my old cardiologist, my old electrophysiologist, um, I had another neurologist, my old primary care, 
I need a list. I have um, ENT, I have two in ENTs, two. Um, the people who did all my biopsies, uh, my uh, pain management team, and um, my dermatologist, <laughs> my, my psychologist, my psychiatrist, the other psychiatrist I was seeing, well at one point I was seeing two psychiatrists. I mean, I have a phenomenal team. And these people took all these bits and pieces of crazy information and gave me individualized treatment and then came together, looked at each other's notes, talked to each other on the phone and um, came up with things that wound up amounting to the proper treatment for POTS. <laughs> so as I'm out there, got to get a POTS specialist and I get there, it's like you've done everything that you know he um, put me on some off my floor enough he put me on um, a beta blocker pro pro pranol pro you guys have probably heard of that or something close to it you know I could take it or leave it it's just you know it's just treating another symptom it's not a cure you know I was just hoping to hear from him because I'm even beyond POTS 102, so I wanted to hear, you know, POTS 103. <laughs> wanted to hear about all the research and studies that are going on and about different things that seem to be connected, possible things. Because um, he was saying there's no underlying disease that we can treat for you. Yeah, like, I, I know that, but I said to him, I'm like, um, you know, this is debilitating. I have a six-year-old, you know, and so you're basically telling me that I'm trapped in this body with all of these symptoms. And he just kind of was like, you know, basically at the yes, you know, he didn't say those words, but he didn't say no. And he just, you know, I'm like, I was thinking to myself, unacceptable. No, unacceptable because there has not been enough research. There has not been enough effort for me to say okay this just is what it is no there is something to this whether it be environmental whether it, there is something to all of this and he did say something about you know fibromyalgia i was like not once in all this time that i've been going through this i've had lime thrown at me possibility all these things i said not once has anyone said fibromyalgia and i'm going dot 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 like say something help me to understand why you would throw this um, diagnosis um, on top of all this other stuff you know I just so I didn't even like I don't know if I don't know I think I'm just gonna leave my fibromyalgia alone I feel like it's under the dysautonomia umbrella and to me I think that that's the problem we're coming up with so many subsets and I just like to say dysautonomia because it's all dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system. And I feel like some of these other terms mean, you know, hell, we just don't know. Fibromyalgia. You know, um, not to belittle the um, medical community on that, um, but I have this feeling that it's going to be the thing that uh, is our brick wall. The word fibromyalgia in people's, uh, a lot of doctors' way of just tossing that into the mix like let's keep it very compartmentalized about what fibromyalgia is you just can't throw that around there's some people really suffering with that yeah I'm talking and I don't know I want to you know let's not be little fibromyalgia okay let's um and let's if anything let's just look at dysautonomia and let's get to the bottom of it you know, um, unless there's like the, the, the Ehlers Dan Lowe's and all these things with tissue, this, different types of other disorders where they can really look at the, you know, we need to get at this whole dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system, um, which is starting to fall into all these categories, you know. So basically, I didn't learn anything. And as a matter of fact, I was like, he should be able to tell by the way I'm reacting to him. Most doctors will just be like, okay, they'll notice that I already know that I'm completing their sentences. And then so they try to up it to 102, 103. Like, okay, she's one, wait, is it 
101, 102, however we go. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, try to bring it to my level where I'm at, the amount of research, you know, I've done and so forth. But he didn't. So I'm going to have another tilt table test, which I'm all for. You know, um, you can't hate on having another tilt table test. And of course, my numbers there were like 140 over, you know, whatever. And, you know, Pulse 92. I'm like, seriously, body? Seriously? And he's and then with the orthostatics, I was saying to him, he's like, you know, have you stand up for five minutes? I'm like, that's not gonna. It's my my case is not gonna present itself. My case of pots is just not gonna present itself in five minutes usually. You know, even at home, I'll stand around for an hour doing my orthostatics. That's how determined I am um, to to get the numbers. You know, and then I get them within that hour. So you know even in office for him my body wouldn't do you know especially I was I was stressed by then I'm seeing him I'm underwhelmed not overwhelmed I wanted to be overwhelmed by the visit I was so underwhelmed I was so just hungry for newer and cutting edge information research you say you're a POTS specialist so I expect I expect it more but I will say this I think if you're at the beginning of your diagnosis he's perfect I think he's a brilliant man um, and um, could help people who are newly diagnosed with POTS and so um, but for those of us who've been now dealing with it for so long I mean I've done all those things that he could recommend you know so yeah did everything and then some <laughs> <laughs> then some and so and then he's saying the gastroparesis is a big component and I know my GI is concerned about some neurological uh, colon thing I don't know how to say it but that I need to be tested for and everything but it's still dysautonomia so um, yeah and I just don't like the belittling of that word I know it's not a disease I'm just kind of in the end, it's going to be funny. There may be a disease called dysautonomia. I have this weird feeling <laughs> that there it's going to be a capital D. Is that I always write it with a capital D because um, the more I'm learning about people um, with it, I'm like, this thing. There's something here. There's something here, and we're lucky to be online where we get to come into contact with so many people. You know socially where we really get into in-depth conversations while we're at home and you know these people are, are you know doing this stuff at work and they still have other lives we're living this we're living our own research and I believe that lower Dean that dysautonomia one day will be a big D I just do and so we've got to help these people you've got to help them <laughs> but that's it I'm gonna keep that short so I'm underwhelmed but excited about my primary care and are also excited about, as far as non-pharmacological things, um, my new pot specialist is all for the saline solution. When I was telling him the problem, my, my rheumatologist feared, he was just like, he too was like, it's saline solution. He's like, I said, so if I got it every day, he said it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. It's saline solution, and as long as um, you're being tested for your electrolytes and everything, you're fine to get it every day. You know, so um, that's good. So that'll, that was helpful. And that's the one thing I left there with, feeling like, okay, now I can say to my rheumatologist, even though I'm no longer going to let her handle it, I'm going to let my primary care handle it, but I just want her to know that she can feel comforted. But that's it for now. Um, I'm underwhelmed, but that's because I've done so much research and have seen so many specialists that by the time I got to him, he there wasn't anything new for him to say to me but he is a great doctor and I'll learn more as I do the tilt tables I have more ways to go with him and um, can give you a little bit more insight um, on Dr. Jeffrey Kluger his staff is amazing it's a phenomenal place you will feel well taken care of and you are in good hands with his brilliance and knowledge and um, he's a great place to start okay All right. I just forgot how to